Rebecca Collins here with another in progress video. Today I want to talk about what I think about when a new project comes in and some of the background steps that happen before the fun work of color and composition and all the fun stuff um, that you saw last week um, with some painting stuff. Before I can start thinking about painting, I've got to look at the photo and I, the first thing I ask myself is what is great about this photograph and what is great about this animal. And as I look at this photograph of Buddy the Cocker Spaniel, I am impressed with um, how much detail there is in the coat. If you'll, we're going to blow it up and you'll see there's, you know, quite a bit of, um, you know, shadow. And, you know, even though it's blown out a bit with the flash, I can see that there's freckles on the, on the nose. And um, I'm able to really kind of get a sense for how beautiful this dog is and, and how gorgeous his coat is. And um, so then the second question, of course, I'm going to ask is, is what could be better about this photograph? And obviously, uh, if you're a visual person, the first thing that might be jumping out at you is um, Buddy's eyes. <laughs> They're kind of missing. Um, we really need to address the glow eye in this image. And um, so the first step that I usually do is erase the background. I drop in a white layer. And then I'm going to show you the erased version here. I've already done a lot of the erasing. Um, and then I'll start thinking about glow eye. When you're going to fix glow eye, there's a couple ways. If you've just got big giant saucers, you can grab some eyes from an, uh, an image you may have, an old artwork image of another dog that's similar, and just drop those eyes in. Sometimes that can look a little fake, uh, and you have to really manipulate it to make it work. A lot of times I'll paint in the eyes, and I'll, I'll show you briefly um, how you do that. You make a new layer and you get some black on your brush. Try to get a big brush that's going to match the size of where that pupil should be. You try to determine if you have, we have a little iris here, the brown part that's showing, so I can kind of guess where that, that pupil's supposed to go. Push that in, paint that in there, make a new layer on, oops, a new layer on top of that layer for the twinkly highlight. And I think I'm going to use like a 13 for that. And I can kind of tell, if you look close at this, you can kind of tell where maybe that highlight would be. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and paint a white dot. Let me turn on the, the black layer below, and you'll see where I've painted this white dot. Now, to make it look realistic, I'm going to blur it some. I need to go down to the layer that has the black on it and blur that. You know, go back up to the layer that has, let me bring this layers palette over and you'll see there's the dog layer down here, layer one, layer four is, is the pupil. I'll turn these off so we can see them in order. Layer one is the dog, layer on top of that's going to be the pupil layer. Got to blur that up and then go up to layer five. That's where my little highlight is. And you want to try to make the eyes look glassy. So you might end up painting in some other, you know, some other little highlights uh, in your attempt to make them <laughs> look realistic. And if you see as I as I zoom out, this is way, way far away from looking realistic. I worked on these eyes for about an hour the other day, and I'll show you where I got to. It's, it's actually looking pretty good. Um, let me see. <clears throat> so this is where I was able to get a little challenged by the eyes. And the other thing that is challenging with two um, dogs is when you combine pictures um, you know, when you're going to work from two different photographs, people never send, they're never going to send you two, two dogs that are both standing up. No, they're going to send you one that's laying down, or they're going to send you one that they stood on a chair to shoot, and then one that they shot, you know, sitting down on the ground. They're going to send you things from different angles. They're going to send you completely different poses. Um, so you just have to get good at combining them and figuring out compositional solutions to those, to those situations look at her original you'll see that she's just kind of looking straight on by rotating her angling her differently she's kind of now she's looking up and she's happy instead of just kind of looking down and straight ahead or not down but just straight ahead and the same thing with this cocker buddy um, one thing I did here was rotate the head and I'll show you a, a quick way to do that if you take your marquee tool and select the head and then go Command J. That's going to make a duplicate of that head. You also want to make a duplicate of the body. So I'm going to show you this real quick. I've already done it on another layer, but I'm going to show you. Edit trans. Oops. Edit transform 
rotate. And then, because I've got a layer with just the head on it. See, let me turn that bottom layer and you see, see, I've got just the head, then a copy of the body. So now what I have to do is go into, you know, just kind of select here and go down here and delete some of that because that's getting in the way. So now, there we go, we've got two pieces we have to get together somehow. And you kind of match them up when you're doing a rotation as best you can. Then you're going to take your eraser and erase some of that body. And we'll end up using the clone tool up here, the rubber stamp tool to, you know, make that work. We'll also use the smudge tool. I might make a, a, a blank layer above this and go in and find my smudge tool and just kind of, you know, work around where those seams are to make it make it work. See right here you can see there's, you know, a hard break. Um, oops, let me get a different eraser. There's kind of a hard break over here where the head and the neck are showing. It's kind of pasty. It's going to look kind of pasted on until you until you get in there and smooth it around and work with it uh, quite a bit. But again, rotating the head can often make uh, a rather serious dog uh, look happy. So here's, here's the version I ended up with and here's where I'm at with this project right now. So I still have tons of work to do. But again, you can see, let's go back to our original photos. You can see we've come, there's Buddy after, and here's Buddy before. So I've really just optimized the photograph, cleaned up the background, and now I'm ready to really play. Uh, Althea before, and let me turn that layers off. And here she is after. Again, she was, you know, kind of, at sort of a boring angle in the original photo, but just by kind of rotating her head back and making her look kind of up and in the direction of Buddy, uh, she's a lot happier. So anyway, that's where I'm at with this, and I'll check back in with you guys. Thanks for watching this in-progress video. It's Rebecca Collins with ArtPaw.com.